Now to create a vertical profile, once you have an alignment or a horizontal profile, you can go to the vertical tab and you can click create vertical alignment. The stationing is gonna match your horizontal stationing and you're gonna start your first point or your point of beginning at a specified elevation. So if you know the elevation, you could type it in. Now there's some tricks that we can use here and one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to this group up here and I'm going to make a, uh, another view. So what I can do is I can take this alignment and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new profile view. And then I'm just going to split this guy in half so I can see it. And down here, I'm gonna right click on the view and I'm gonna go to surfaces and I'm going to click on this surface and in this case, it's this topo surface is really what I'm looking for, but I'll turn both of those on and do a zoom extents. And now I can see my existing ground along this alignment. So if I had the curve data, which I would probably get from a profile, I could simply type it in. So if I know what my elevation is, I could simply type it in. So at my point of beginning, which is down here, I want it to match the incoming road. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say at point snap, and at the point can be the end of this line right here, right? So I can pick that or I can pick it from here. So it's going to define what that elevation is. It sets that first elevation point. And then I could come into my next point, and my next point might be a grade break or a symmetrical curve or asymmetrical curve, a vertical arc, or an end of a symmetrical curve. I'm just gonna do symmetrical curve and I'm gonna place my PIs with some some curves, uh, uh, curve lengths. So if I was to come in here, I know I wanna try to match existing ground. So I'm going to go to my uh, next point and I can click here or I can pick over here. So if I know in plan view, I want this to be my vertical or I can just come down here and pick. It grabs that station and the elevation might be here and then the curve length, I could come in and put maybe a minimum of 150 curve length and it puts in that first segment. Now I can kind of work my way over and put in my next symmetrical curve where maybe we put it in somewhere here in the middle. And for the elevation, we just pick that as well. And then this curve length, um, you know, maybe we want it to be about that long we can set that in there so now we've got that point and I could come up and say that curve length maybe is um, uh, a little bit too much or maybe we want to round it down I can make it 150 again and then I could come over here and add in my last point or my next point which is this one and elevation will match there and the curve length for this let's make this one short be 50 so you can see I've got that curve there. And then I can come down and maybe do another one here or just take it right to the end. So up top you can see that it's actually in the glyphs, it's actually showing me where that is. So if I want, I can actually come up in here and grab the end of that. And then for the elevation, again, I could come down here and pick that point or um, right click and say from surface snap it picks that surface and I can pick this from the horizontal view at that point and it grabs that surface elevation and this one actually is just going to be a grade break. So when I put that in, it puts that last point in and now I've got a vertical curve that I've created and drawn to follow my existing uh, ground as close as possible in this case. Again, if I had the curve data, I could just simply enter that data by putting in the stationing and the elevation of the PVI along with the curve length.